Welcome back everyone to our weekly webinar series, Embracing Change. We have one of my dear friends, one of my, what I call classified as masters with us today, Dr. D in short form, who's going to discuss and share with us and have a dialogue together on the subconscious. So welcome Dr. D, welcome back. Um, and uh, thank you for taking the time um, from your busy schedule. And uh, I think uh, everybody's looking forward to this beautiful experience of dialogue. But I think before we begin, if you can, let's all take a moment. And if you can just guide us to a short meditation to bring us into the space where we can truly absorb um, what you're about to share as we spend this time together. Thank you, Faisal. Welcome, everybody. Many of us have met before. Few of us are meeting for the first time. Namaste. Let's begin today's session with a short meditation. Whichever posture you are sitting in, chairs, sitting straight or sitting reclined, semi reclined, it doesn't matter. Be in that position. Be in that posture. Close your eyes. Just for a few moments. It's going to be taking maybe two to three minutes. Just close your eyes. There are many, many activities happening around us. Also, there are so many things happening within us. Ignore everything around you and within you for some time. Just listen to the mind, the background music. And also the, and also the instructions of this guided meditation. Breathe in deeply and breathe out very slowly. Breathing out is long and slow. Feel the mind the friction of the clothing in touch with your chest and belly. Feel the upper back, middle back and lower back, hip, butter, thighs, relax. With the breathing out, imagine your body, mind, and soul are taking deeper relaxation. Today, let us give the next 45 minutes to an hour for absolutely for our own self. Let us understand the concepts, tricks, shortcuts, methods to hack our subconscious mind, to go into our subconscious mind, minimum to understand our subconscious mind. Allow the body, allow the mind to let go of unwanted emotions. Allow it. Whether it happens or not, it is left to the mind. Just try. Let's open the possibility, possibility to understand subconscious mind. Even if we glimpse into the subconscious mind, we are glimpsing into the meditation. Bliss. Once we enter the blissful state of meditation, once, just once, in lifetime. He does not go for lesser pleasures than anything. 
Breathe in deeply. Breathe out very slowly. Slowly, join your palms together and rub your palm. Rub it well until you feel the warmth in your palm. Make a cup of your palm, keep it around the eye socket. Open your eyes. Good evening. Faisal, is my audio clear? Yes, it's clear. Okay, thank you. So, so doctor, let's, yes. uh, let's begin. So first, I think let's take a step back and get back to just the basics, right? What, what, do we, what is the subconscious? What does that mean? What does that entail? And how does one access or just first understand, right? The difference yep. between the conscious and the subconscious. Let's just go back to the basic. Okay. So human mind, human mind desires everything. Body has got a very little role, very little role. I've been in cancer wards, and not much, but very few cancer wards during, our, during my internship, housemanship. And cardiac wards, heart wards, that a lot of heart wards, next cardiology wards I did. One thing I have noticed there or understood there is it is not the severity of the disease. It is not the uh, course of treatment. It is usually the mind which decides how that person is coming out, how soon he is coming out, or he or she, how better they are going to get healed, how fast they are going to come out of the side effects of the treatment, whether they are going to be alive or not. Everything is decided not by body, but by the mind. Mind, in the two types of minds are there. One is the conscious mind. That is only 20% of our thinking is through the conscious mind. 20% is general, I'm saying it. 15 to 20%. Remaining 80 to 85% of our mind is subconscious mind. In subconscious mind, there are more than 16 different areas, but let's say two areas, let's take it today. One is, you know, sometimes when you're, if you're a person who knows driving or who usually drive your car, you may have noticed sometimes from your office to your home or from the shopping place to your home, you will be driving, Throughout, you were talking in phone or you were driving, but your mind was somewhere. But still, you stopped at the signals, you took the right turns, correct turns, and you reached home safe. Or sometimes you are terrified, did I reach home safe or did I hit somebody on the road? Our mind was somewhere occupied, but still it was taking it. While learning, or when we are in the beginning stage of driving, we can't do that, or we never do. In due course, once it becomes a habit or a skill, then we can afford to go to the autopilot. So the question is, is the autopilot conscious mind or subconscious? It is a small skill of a subconscious mind. Or let us say that is the basic skill of subconscious mind is autopilot. Whether we need it or not, whether we want it or not, to keep us safe, some of the activities of our life our subconscious mind takes it as an autopilot. How good it is or not, that is later. But this is one activity of subconscious. Another activity of subconscious mind is when near and dear in our family, death of near and dear or big loss in the business or something unpleasant, big unpleasant thing happens. How our mind is able to absorb, how our mind is able to digest it, how our mind is able to process it, come out of it, it totally depends on the skills we are able to connect with in the subconscious mind. If we are not able to connect with very well in the subconscious or if we don't have skill to connect with the subconscious mind, it just puts in a small box and throws it in a dark corner. 
or denial, we call it. We, it goes into a denial and uh, it goes on with the life. Sometimes it's called escapism. Sometimes it is called denial, which you call it, whatever you call it. But in some cases, or let's say most cases, it will come back to haunt us later part of our life. You can't escape that. So that is the subconscious activity, really speaking. Subconscious has got a lot variety of activities uh, from perceiving happiness, enjoying the happy moments, reliving the happy moments, sad moments, everything. Unfortunately, sad moments are easily relived by our mind than the happy moments. To, to this day, nobody knows uh, why. Only unhappy moments are remembered very clearly, not the happy moments. Uh, nobody knows. But using certain techniques of journaling, certain techniques of meditation, certain text, techniques of visualization, we can access more of the subconscious mind and keep it in our control instead of we being in its control. So, okay, so now we have an understanding of, I mean, basic understanding of conscious yeah. versus subconscious. Now we're talking about compartmentalizing the emotion without being in denial. So we're not talking about putting into a box, suppressing it, compressing it, and praying that it's not gonna show up at some point, and we all know it does. Right, we all have had that experience. So now, yes. how do we consciously, you know, make that choice of taking the emotion and compartmentalizing it without being in denial? Like, what, what does that mean? How is that even possible? Yeah, let's start with a very simple thing: is because compartmentalizing, denial, all these are big words. Let us start from the very basic, like kids. When the kids have exams coming up closer, mathematics is there, science is there, social studies, English, language, whatever it is. When every subject is looming on them, is like towering on them and saying, exams are near, they study this, study this, study this. Especially the kid who are very actively playing or time passing without studying. When the exams are coming closer, they get terrified. They have homework, they have to complete the projects, they have exams. So in, they fight with subjects, like they try 20 minutes, this 10 minutes, that 10 minutes, that after some time, they get terrified. What they do is they just leave everything and run and sit in front of the TV and watch a cotton chair. So that is, a, it is a form of fear, not able to face it, escaping from that, and then going and sitting in front of the cotton channel. Of course, that moment they have overcome that, frightening situation, but they are going to pay the price for the consequence of it. That is one type of not knowing how to compart. Another is, we have some, like in our kid is not well, we are going to the office, even in the office when we are sitting in front of the system or in the meeting, we keep thinking, how is the child? Texting a message to home, how is the child? Is, she, is her fever come down or not? Or and then we are asking about how she feels. Did she eat or did she could she hold the food or did she vomit? Our mind is all the time about the kid coming behind it. Or the other way around, we have some issue in the office. Something is going on which is not as we planned. Uh, that stressful situation, we are not able to leave it in office. When we come home, again in the home, when we are sitting on the dining table or when we are talking to the partner or the child or anybody, our mind is looming with that same thought. I hope this guy is over. Let the work with them. Hope they finish it. There's not be. Why are we not able to break it and keep it there? Okay, once in a while, coming up in the mind is, I understand. All the time, office is taught in home. All the time, home issues are taught in the office. And nothing is going to work as we want it. So how to compartmentalize it? Or how to break it? When we want it, as I want it, I can take it. When I do not want it, I can leave it. Or I can wait, make that issue to wait until I choose to address it. That is a skill. It's, it is not an art. It is a skill. You can practice it. You can get mastery over it. And you can access the certain parts of our subconscious. And it helps us in 
for example, there are people who are procrastination. They try everything possible, but they are not able to overcome the procrastination. But frankly speaking, latest study from Howard says, the people who procrastinate are the most successful people <laughs> in business. It says, with the, with the evidence, it says that people who procrastinate, again, at the end, the two lines they are given. There are two types of procrastination. One is because too many things are there, we don't know how to organize it. Another is, uh, um, uh, another is uh, really uh, not exactly too many things, not interested in putting our head into it. No, not this. When too many things are there in the mind, that is good. But not interested to put in interest in anything, that is, that is not a successful success formula. So again, coming back to this, what are methods are there? How to compartmentalize? There are very, very simple, extremely simple techniques are there to uh, train our mind to think as we want it. For example, if you say, I want to wake up at six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock, whichever you choose the time. Of course, the best time of prayer to wake up is five o'clock in the morning, like Robin Shama says all the time. 5 a.m. cloud, that's all fine. But my point is, if you decide to wake up at five o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock or eight o'clock, it doesn't matter, whatever the time, set the alarm. Decide the previous night. I am not going to snooze. If you snooze, whatever the time you have decided you have set, and if you snooze, your subconscious mind, you are losing control from of the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is extremely judgmental about you, not about others, about you. Your subconscious mind decides how it functions based on your small behaviors. It does not bother how you manage the big crisis. It really doesn't care at all about how you manage the big crisis. It just bothers to look at, for example, you are going out for dinner and you decide today at dinner, I'm not going to touch wine or I'm not going to touch coffee or I'm not going to touch pasta. And after going there, you get tempted maybe today it is okay. Let me have a sip of wine or let me have just a scoop of ice cream or just a, what you decided not to go do. And then after going there, if you do it, then the subconscious decides now. Subconscious judges us from these small things. So the minus point and plus point is, minus point is we stumble again and again. So we are not giving confidence to the subconscious mind that, to motivating the subconscious mind to help us. Plus point of this is, controlling the subconscious mind is not a big thing, not a very difficult. By managing smaller things, almost 50% of our subconscious mind, we can control and bring it in our country. 50%, it's big thing. Most geniuses are able to control their subconscious mind only 50 to 60%. More than 60%, if a person is able to control the subconscious mind, um, I don't know. <laughs> the person will be a mom, will not be sitting and listening or giving a talk or anything like that because the subconscious decides everything. Next is what is meditation? How the subconscious mind of meditation is on? Uh, is there any what do you call it, link between? See, exact true sense of what is meditation is zero thinking. We don't have to go for it. Most of the time when we talk about meditation, we are not talking about the ultimate meditation. Ultimate meditation is zero. We are shunya. We are going to the state where we are not going to respond to any thought. In the beginning, then there is no thought at all in the Almost the, if you connect your brain with the encephalogram, there will be a straight line, almost like a death. That is the ultimate meditation. Is it needed to have ultimate meditation? It's not necessary. Is it good to have ultimate meditation? Absolutely. It's good. But 
again, it's a long way to go. So we are not going to discuss about that ultimate. We'll go a little before that. When you lie down, you should be able to sleep within, within 180 seconds. That is true health. If you can sleep within three minutes, you are in the ultimate best mental health. Any minute more than three minutes, that much you are away from the perfect mental health. It takes one hour for me to go to bed and not go to sleep and then I wake up after two hours means you need to take care of your mental health for sure. How to judge, how to confirm our mental health is good when you wake up, whatever time you are waking up, when you wake up, if you are able to wake up like a child on a holiday, not on a child on a school day, on a child on a holiday, if you can wake up that freshness, that energy you can wake up, then your mental health is perfect. Uh, it takes for me a mug of coffee and then maybe some stretches to reach that freshness. 50-50 your mental health is. One coffee, one cappuccino are followed by one shot of espresso followed by another shot of espresso already you need mental health program. <laughs> That's all it is. See, coffee Certain type of body type needs coffee. Certain type of mind types need coffee or a stimulant. I would say coffee is equal to one stretch in sun, sun salutation. It's the same. It is one and the same. I drink coffee once in blue moon because I love the fragrance and taste of coffee. But uh, everyday coffee, if it is required, then your body is not in medication. So all these things, how to control it? Again, comes back to the compartmentalizing, learning how to compartmentalize using subconscious. So I'm going to teach one technique now. I don't know whether I have taught you in the last seminar or not. It's like visual picturization program. It is like uh, using the visuals. For example, tomorrow or today after the session or tomorrow when you have free time, 10 minutes time. Open a folder and keep it in your laptop. Then go, could, go to the Google images, type, Mm. cats lots of photographs of cats just choose randomly without analyzing just randomly choose three photographs of three different cats different color persian blah 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 whichever it is whatever appeals to you immediately choose without analyzing put that photograph copy paste it in that folder then change the topic tropical resorts or tropical forest there will be lots of photographs. Choose the three photographs, put it in the folder. Then architectural marvels or palm jumeirah, whichever you want. Just put whatever in that, or whatever photographs appears. Select three photographs, like three, 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 let's say six to 10 photographs you choose. Put it in the folder. Later. Now, what we have to do next is to switch off all the lights in the room. You sit in front of your computer, if you have a projector or the luxury of having a projector, put those nine foot over 10 photos. Then keep a stopwatch in your hand or just to keep a clock, uh, electronic clock in front of you. Two minutes, look at one photograph in the slide show format, two, two minutes, one photograph. Keep talking about that photograph, that Persian cat. In front. I love this Persian cat, it is so fluffy and it's beautiful. The, 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 uh, the hair is so soft to look at. I wish I have I have this pet in my home. Blah 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 blah. Whatever you want to talk for the next two minutes, keep talking. At the end of the two minutes, click change the photograph. Next photograph is about architecture. We don't know what it is. Next photograph. Talk about that photograph. When you are talking about that photograph, your mind will. Oh, I should have told you that point about that Persian cat. No, no. You are going to talk only about think and talk only about this Persian, sorry, the architectural model. After two minutes, click. Next photograph. It is about a Kumo Shambhala estate, a resort, beautiful resort in, resort in Bali. That photograph. You talk about that photograph, that resort. I wish to stay there. I'm staying there. I'm staying with my best friend. And we are swimming on that. And then coming out, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to talk, keep talking about it. At the end of two minutes or during the two minutes, Oh, I wish I had told about that architecture, that 
about that photograph something else no 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 this 2 minutes is only for this next photograph next photograph like 2 minutes 2 minutes 2 minutes 5 to 6 to 10 photographs in slide in slide format slide show format keep talking about it stop it that's all weekly once even if you practice this your mind learns to compartmentalize by itself it is the most easiest format of course it is not going to be helpful when you are having extreme stressful situation but this is a basic where how we want to compartmentalize this issue is an issue we need to address but on my terms not whenever it wants to come and trouble my mind i am not going to be taking it i am going to choose the time when i am going to address this how i am going to address this that is the way so this is one simplest form of exercise weekly once next week can i use the same photographs no randomly three different topics google images three three photographs from each put it in the folder no thinking and choosing what comes in the mind first choose put it. can i use the photographs from my last tour no that you know the scenario how you took the photograph what was the place no no that something randomly new randomly different randomly new. and should it be every time 2 minutes per photograph yes that cannot that is not negotiable should i need to use 10 photographs not necessary you can use minimum as minimum of 6 photographs less than 6 photographs no use two 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 three different topics if you have a lot of time or if you want to achieve the compartmentalization quite fast then choose 10 to 15 photographs use 2 minutes 30 minutes twice a week if you have the time luxury of time twice a week you do it eight weeks later your compartmentalization will be in a different level at least in smaller things it will be in a different level this is a practical compartmentalization beginning basic anybody can do above the age of 10 below the age of that <laughs> anybody at any age can do this it works it works wonderful recently we found in parkinsons people with parkinsons disease beginning stage of parkinsons disease um we have used this uh, visualization technique same technique of course we chose the photographs we put that there in the slide show we sit with the patient and we start talking and say come on you tell one point i will tell one point you tell one point we encourage them sportively it works out of the progression of disease slow stuff we won't say cure because it's in the beginning stage of the study but progression of the disease slow stuff because compartmentalization plays a very important role and the quality of our work improves tremendously with the, when we learn the compartmentalization this is basic next level breathing exercises alternate nostril breathing most of you will be aware if you are not aware in video course in future you can learn from me or from anybody alternate nostril breathing eight three minutes minimum more than that we have to decide what type of personality will be ideally maximum is 7 minutes to 10 minutes don't do more than that if you are finding headache or something while doing this 3 to 5 minutes is good enough not more than that alternate nostril breathing this also trains our subconscious mind to compartmentalize it more more, more uh, easy technique of compartmentalizing or learning from that Uh, I hope I address it now. Yes, yeah, so and I've done eight weeks of of this exercise. So it's basically automatically will help me subconsciously to compartmentalize without me intentionally doing it. Right? Exactly. It's not that I'm going to choose. It's going to become in subconscious auto, mind. Yes, yes. It's autopilot. In subconscious so mind, everything is autopilot. We cannot, unless we have a mastery to some extent, subconscious mind. We cannot control it much. It controls, but we can. guide it where it has to take the control that we trick it frankly speaking we trick it in a way that you don't take control in my food you take control in my exercise or <laughs> you take control in my this problem that problem we choose it or we train it to take it and then automatically it takes it we don't have to worry about or we don't have to think how will that compartment it's not it takes over by itself okay so it's it's kind of like when we talk about meditation you put in a Put in a cassette to clean the head of the recorder for those who 
even know what that means. Many of the people <laughs> Good are, old days. are yeah. too young to even know what that means. But so this is similar, but with a specific objective in mind. Yes. Okay, so now we've decided to do the exercise for eight weeks. We decide to do, you know, alternate nostril breathing to accelerate the process. Now, what's the element of journaling within the space? I mean, you, one of the topics you said you wanted to look at is journaling. Yes. So yes. how does that fit into the concept of hacking the subconscious, if at all? Beautiful. Uh, how much time do I have now? <laughs> you, have, you have 29 minutes. Good. So let's say we are, we are listening now, you may be 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s, whatever age you are in. Already, if you have learned to compartmentalize, good. If you have not learned to compartmentalize, as a protective mechanism, your mind sometimes puts it in a box, the problem, locks it, throws it away. That's a protective mechanism. Because if all our problems, if we remember very clearly, then uh, our mind, uh, we will go. If you remember in our teenage or in during our childhood, uh, who scolded us uh, during the dating time, who talked bad about us, blah, blah, blah. Everything, if you remember, we will go mad. Literally, we will go mad. So, it's a protective mechanism of the mind. For some time, let it be in the corner. Very recently, very recently, beautiful study was done in India and Israel and India together, what they found was that most of the people, especially who are suffering from heart block and lungs or chest related cancers. And few, uh, in few cases, it is the large intestine related cancers. When they went back in hypnotherapy, when they went back in, because they did not choose all the cases. They just chose the case where the body is not responding, where the treatments are not responding. Like the six sittings of chemo or four or five sittings of this or that, this medication for this course of time should be giving this results based on our observation of the, in the past. But it is not happening in few cases. But 10 sittings, nothing is happening or sometimes deteriorating or sometimes 50% of expected 50% less than expected results. So then they started going back. What is that? Medications are correct, dosage is right, the history says the other way, but these people are not responding. So when they went into counseling analysis, they found two things. Two things. One is people who were, who have not learned or never learned or never practiced surrendering never ever or true surrender if they have not learned or if we have never tried see surrendering we do in front of the god we say oh god i surrender totally to you please take care of my child take care of this take care of that when we come out of the altar or when we come out of the prayer i hope god will remember my prayer or he's he's busy with all the millions of other prayers we are worrying if we truly, truly surrender, we will not be worrying after this. After praying, we'll say, I told to God, God is going to take care. At least for 10, 4, 15 more minutes or 2 hours or 3 hours, some, a certain period of time, we are not going to. That is surrender. Second, I can do everything. I will do everything. I will do. I, 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 that I concept. Then it is very strong with some people or most of us, we have the I, but it depends on how strong it is or how weak it is. I is effective. I is good in business and everything to kick start. After kicking start, the whole time, whole life, if you are going to remind I, 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 then I, my master used to say, God will say, okay, you take care. You are so much of I, you are so much filled with your I, that you take care of everything. I'm, I will surrender to you. You take care of everything. That is what the boss says. That's what my master used to say in a very layman terms. But it is. When, you know, Albert Einstein, when he was interviewed, and they said, 
why did why it took this much of time to understand or these many centuries scientists could not understand that fall of one apple or fall of a, or this electric uh, current uh, moving all these things you found it or he said no 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 he just gave the hand up i surrendered to the ultimate because i did not understand what was happening there his words are that <laughs> the times in thomas edison their words are this we surrendered to the ultimate because we did not understand what it is when we surrendered means not blind, blindly surrender they tried they put their effort in one stage they understood no something is happening here which is beyond me i'll tell you much more easier term i don't bother about all the time stage when there is a tsunami when there is a tsunami the big 20 30 meter 40 meter waves are happening crashing to the beach there is not a single fish dead fish in that way how come the sea is full of fish ideally speaking when the tsunami wave falls into the uh, uh, beach there should be tons of fish tons and tons of fish dead fish lying down there because the wave has crashed but 6 hours to 8 hours before tsunami 6 hours before tsunami hits then fish comes to know and it is going into the deep sea that's why when the wave crashes into the land one day out of 100th of the area there will be fish my professor used to say idiot fish <laughs> that's all <laughs> they are not they are gross fish they are not subtle enough to understand it it's very simple they hear that ultrasonic sound they feel that ultrasonic vibration because human are so gross we are not able to feel the ultrasonic wave it doesn't mean that ultrasonic doesn't exist it exists we came to know human came to know about ultrasonic and infrared only 50 years back but fish is there always aware about it dogs they know before the earthquake happens two hours before the earthquake dogs start feeling something is going on especially most trained dogs are there military dogs they feel it the vibration especially bomb detecting dogs they feel the vibration much before the earthquake is ever going to happen when it is beyond 4 beyond the point of 4 4 is enough because usually damage has happened by 6 but 4 when it crosses that earthquake before that two hours before the dogs are arrived so it doesn't mean that there was no ultrasonic sound or infrared light or anything it was all there it is always there human mind was not able to perceive it, reach it that's all same way compartmentalizing all these things are denial because we do not it doesn't mean that it does not exist that is the problem surrendering means very simple it is not uh, we are leaving everything to god or we are not it, is, it doesn't mean that uh, i am not going to put any effort up towards no i am i am promising god that i am going to put 100% possible from my side but i don't want to take any credit i am going to surrender to you so that i know if i put 100% god is going to put 500% or god or ultimate reality or whatever you believe in. its names only changes it's all same so the surrendering absolute surrender with our full, total effort that is very important how to surrender again it takes a lot of effort and practice from our side to do the surrendering so, next there are times when we fail in our relationship or in our business or in our health or in our whatever it is when we fail if we are not going to analyze why we fail or what made us to fail or what what is my role in this failure or what was the others role in the failure or what is the what is it trying to teach me from this if we do not try to analyze and understand that mistake is going to get repeated again and again and again and again in different forms but because of the fear of addressing that failure we put it in a box lock it and throw that even sometimes throw the key away so that we don't have to accidentally open the box it will come out 
So all these type of problems, fears, worries, phobias, what we did not address from our childhood to now, how to address it? That is that this journaling comes to play. Have you heard of uh, this uh, in your school days? You might have heard. Ten time reading and one time writing it on a piece of paper is almost equal. Some teachers say five times reading. Some teachers say ten times reading. But nobody says less than five times. <laughs> One time writing it down consciously, not just copying it one by one. Consciously writing it down. One time is equal to minimum four to five times. Sometimes ten times equal to thinking in the mind. I still remember when I was uh, when I turned forty. I started forgetting things a lot, so I went to my meditation master, a lot of masters, one of the masters at that time, when I went to him and said, can you teach me some technique, uh, yoga, which can improve my memory? He said, at 40, when you can't remember, you just have to take a piece of paper and then write it on that, what all you have to do, put it in your pocket. But just refer to that paper, that's good. Because your mind is trying to practice how to forget the unpleasant things Practice run is these small, small things it is from there. <laughs> I said, uh, when should I learn some specific yoga to understand this or to improve the memory? He said, until you are 10, 12, 14, you can practice those things. Afterwards, uh, the day you forget the list of things you want to do, you have written it in a piece of paper and put it in the pocket. You forget that that list is in your pocket. That day you can start practicing the thing is, uh, basically what we have to understand is journaling means that people think that journaling is only one variety. No. To my knowledge, there are 21 varieties of journaling for different purposes. Usually, therapists, doctors, counselors, whatever they find most uh, successful or most successfully treats their in their practice, they cling to that or they catch it and they work on it more and more and more and more. Some doctors take up purging as a journalist. Some doctors take up happiness as a journalist. Some, some people, some trainers take uh, uh, gratefulness as a journalist. Some people, there are so many methods out there. But I would say minimum, I would say basic, basic level five journalings we have to track it. There, are, there is no time or energy to do everything. And today, I want to address out of the five, I'll tell the five names that two, minimum two, I'll try to explain in detail. First journaling, what we have to do is our subconscious mind forgets the happy, pleasant moments of life. How do I know that subconscious mind forgot? If you wake up in the odd time, like 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, or 4 o'clock in the morning, to few hours before you had decided to wake up, you woke up. When you wake up, if you can remember only pleasant things of life, wonderful. At that time, if you remember all odd, unwanted things of your life, that means you are subconscious in mess. Subconscious is an animal of habit. We can create a habit and make it to follow that regularly. Very simple. However age, whatever the age you are, take a small piece of paper or a notebook, small notebook, you take it. Every single day, three minutes, not more, just three minutes. Start writing what all pleasant things happened in your life. It can be as simple as uh, when you felt you are not as beautiful as you think or like others, one boy or one girl came and told you, Wow, your eyes are so beautiful. I wish I had that type of eyes. That made your day and that made your that season itself fantastic. It can be as simple as that pleasant thing. Write it down. Uh, um, Mr. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so told me my eyes are beautiful. Afterwards, my confidence level built up a lot. So I'm very happy when I think about that moment. Or when your first child was born, then you held the child. When you kiss the child, that fragrance of the child, that smoothness of the child's foot, that small fingers when you are holding, how it felt, if you can remember that, write that. 
or simple no need to go that big simple i was in uh, uh, i was in uh, zurich and there there was a small restaurant and the uh, chibiks that restaurant there i ordered a dish uh, the potato based dish and that is the scraped potato deep fried and i forgot the name sorry rusty <laughs> rusty i ordered the rusty and it was so different juicy tasty right it down whatever it is it can be a simple your grandmother made a homemade ice cream or your mother made a homemade ice cream and the over that she poured a syrup colorful syrup or in the road you stayed and in that road there was a, a small seller road peddler seller and he was selling ice creams and he used to give ice cream four different ice cream you remember any pleasant things happened from this moment from the birth whichever you are remember i remember only from the things i remember from eight eight or nine year old onwards i don't remember before that and from 17 16 17 i remember very clearly but write it down keep writing it down every day 3 minutes if you are a 40 year old person if you start writing only only one rule three minutes one minute don't write for an hour just three minutes take no book every day evening keep a reminder every day three minutes i am going to um write this. keep writing keep writing keep writing you may repeat few of the things it's okay it's okay you keep writing repeating repetition is okay one or two gets repeated should i read it and see no just keep writing minimum for a month if possible more than that keep it afterwards one survey take that notebook and go through it just read it it's not the whole notebook i can't read my whole notebook my notebook is like this day i can't read whatever happened in this 48 years of my life whatever happened I, most of the pleasant good things i have written down in my notebook i can't read everything i just randomly open some page and i read i read live it not just read i read with it unbelievable this is a journaling this is the one journaling you have to remember see all these journalings the one basic rule i have found when i when i was serving for his holiness dalai lama he taught me that journaling is your soul poured out don't ever show your journal to your friend your partner your priest your parents nobody keep it in lock and key nobody needs to read your journal because it is your soul poured out into that this is one type of journal happiness happened already whatever happiness happened already this is one journal another is purging journaling is there uh, dr i forgot his name sorry sadegi 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 sadegi's book you can read 12 minutes 12 minutes, 12 minutes. it's it's it is ultimate it's ultimate practice actually so the 12 minutes practice you can read that is purging i'm not going to explain detailly one more small journal i want to explain and then go away the next journal is uh, just take a piece of paper every single day in me by 7 o'clock maximum by 7 o'clock today from wake up to this moment three pleasant things happen to me not gratitude here gratitude is different three pleasant things happen to me if you can't remember anything by evening 7 o'clock don't expect a miracle that from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock night all three is going to happen and then no no by 7 o'clock evening from morning 7 evening 7 in 12 hours nothing three pleasant things if you can't remember it can be simple in the elevator one kid going to the 14 14th floor smile that you beautifully shy beautiful smiles if you can remember that beautiful if you can't remember that you have a problem <laughs> so such a beautiful incident happened that is a one moment and unexpectedly your son or daughter texts a message thank you papa it was very nice gift you thought of blah 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 whatever it is if if you get a message from them, or somebody your assistant prepared the right herbal tea for that day unconsciously she prepared and kept it and when you saw and sip that amazing it was thank you it is a beautiful moment three moments if it does not happen take your other journal search what all things gave you happiness in that three things do it before 9 o'clock 
it can be uh, ordering in a food delivery for a desert and having the desert on listening to harry potter for 10 minutes uh, audio book or lying down in a couch and staring at the sky and counting the stars or a, or, or the stars formation anything you like do it because in 12 levels three plus and things if you can't remember make the three things what you like or what, what you're sure it will happen for example any day i can watch 10 minutes of the movie pretty woman or godfather my mood will get changed any day it's a stupid movie especially the pretty woman is it doesn't matter it changes my mind when i see the smile of julia roberts <laughs> my wife is not here okay <laughs> when i see that's your choice whichever it is or when i see marlon brand is doing this and action that's it so choose few things in life which can elevate your mood that day that moment keep some hundred things which can change your things do it from evening 7 or 8 o'clock not a single day you can go to bed without three pleasant moments these two are the general methods to train the subconscious mind to start looking at the positives last but not the least my master always tells me you see this line how to how to make this dark line smaller without ever touching it i said we we'll use the eraser no don't touch it he said after 15 minutes of trying my brain could not find it he said draw a bigger line this line becomes negligible but not forgetting this line not covering this line that is mistake if you try to cover this line and put another line drawn let this line remain it reminds you until it is to be addressed we have to remember but draw a bigger line that is what this journaling is all about journaling reaches to the core of your subconscious mind many journaling so that any journaling is good of course if you have a specific issue we will advise the counselors we advise which specific uh, journaling is suitable how long it is but minimum two type of journaling you have to must change you have to make the life much easier i address some of the areas in future maybe i'll address the other type of journaling and other methods thank you faisal for this chance. i guess i guess i'm going to have to buy a safe because my journals are everywhere all over my no. my my bedroom <laughs> so i better no. get a i get a safe and lock it up before huh, anybody starts to read it yes. so i guess uh, if the dalai lama is saying we might want to consider listening <laughs> seriously <laughs> he's slightly more trained so but we have five we, but we have read your book <laughs> that's already half my journal right no yes. <laughs> the, the, the book is just a uh, Ah uh, is just the trailer of reality so we won't go there right now. <laughs> yeah. So we've got five more minutes left. Um we had one more topic I don't know if you want to go into that or there's a big topic should... maybe in future yeah. we'll go there. Yeah. yeah, so what what other things would you like to share about the subconscious or about hacking? I mean all of these are again right it's 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 you keep practicing 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 it becomes a default. So you're not yes. going into negation you're going on the yeah. positive because the universe or god doesn't understand negation and doesn't exactly. respond to negation actually i okay. understand exactly. the opposite so yeah. so the thing is you're you're creating a default to move towards the positive you're creating a default to practice going in that space right because you're saying that the body is suppressing the negative exactly right so now but how do we address those smaller lines what practice will help us address or do we let the subconscious do the cleaning automatically which is what meditation is about and which seems is what you're talking about in in uh, in this exactly. journaling methodology exactly all these are all these are prelude for a meditation all these techniques are because if meditation was so easy that anybody who tries will get it in two weeks means whole world will be meditated it is not unfortunate it is not that easy why it is not easy for example kids can meditate much easier than adults yeah. because baggages are less 
That's all. As simple as that. The baggage is all less. My professor used to joke, joke at me when I had some problem with my business partners years back. So I was bitter about it. At that time, my professor was telling me, are you a donkey? Yes. <laughs> Why do you say that? If you are a donkey, carry that baggage whole life. It's up to you. Uphill. Keep carrying that baggage and keep going. Back. Or if you're not a donkey, if you're a horse or if you're a human, shake it off, throw it down and look at it. Not forgetting it. Look at it and say, I am much more than that problem. Tell and keep going, friend. Look at the possible positives. Small, small positives. Take it as a sign and keep walking. Like uh, Anthony Robbins, he used to say, uh, uh, fake it till you make it. He used to say that. <laughs> you just fake it till you make it because we are so good at remembering the bad things told by others, done by others. Why are we forgetting a person who helped us when we were in such a difficult situation or difficult scenario in our life? One person was there talking positive. Uh, cajoling us, taking us out for dinner somewhere or mingling us with others. We forgot about him. But we still remember the person who cheated us or who did something negative. How is it? It's just a training. Here too, we are going to train. It's the opposite side. Of training. Positive. Positive training. Positive training. It doesn't mean that we are going to become like a Dalai Lama, ignoring and forgiving everybody, everything. I hope we can. It is not possible that much, but minimum bearable level. I've seen people practicing this journaling and their cardiac problem reduces considerably. I'm talking about blocked arteries getting unclogged. Blocked arteries, proven laboratory. In laboratory, it is proven. Denormish, denormish programs, reversing heart disease program is all about that. It's not the food. Of course, the fish oil is going to do its work, no doubt about it. But drinking liters of fish oil is not going to work if our mind is not set on it. That's all. It is just happiness, recognizing, enjoying, reliving, and expecting more. That's all this, all this subconscious is all about. Change this is about. putting all this positive thinking, positive whatever into action, right? You're actually action. creating exactly. the muscle, the mental muscle of the subconscious mental muscle. Beautiful, said. Yes. right? So it's basically easier when, when we always say, right, if you practice enough, it's easier to do than not to do. So now exactly. it's the default of the subconscious to go into the positive and remain there, irrespective of where we are or what we're experiencing in the moment. Exactly. All right, Dr. D, that was beautiful. Thank now you. we've got we've got a minute or two. Um, I haven't seen any questions. Unfortunately, we didn't even ask anybody. So if anybody wants to type in a question before we head out, in the meantime, any closing remarks, Dr. D, that you'd like to share with, with, our, with, our, with our viewers and those who are going to watch this? Um, you know, I mean, I think surrender is a big topic. Um, you know, being in a state where we are nothing, right? But I think you're saying that it's okay to do your best and then let go, let God. But, um, you know, what does do your best mean? How far do we need to go? Yeah. Right? Exactly. Again, everybody's capacity is different. Right, exactly. everybody has fears within the system. Right, what does you know for the Muslims it's easier? Right? We just do sizda, right? But again, there's mechanical sizda and there's real sizda, yeah. right? And that's that's what you're referring to is the real deal. Yeah. So last last closing remarks. Any anything you'd like to remind or share? Many of, yes, many of the things what I said are common sense. Most of the things I explained are common sense. Like one of my trainer always tells me. Common sense is not a common practice. Put it into practice. One of what you learn today, anyone, put it into practice. Then the common sense becomes the reality. That's what we are hoping for. And one inch when you move towards happiness, towards better living, better quality, that is going to take you to much bigger heights in practices than theoretically understanding, theoretically analyzing, no kidding. Put it into practice. That's all I would say. All right. Thank you, Dr. D. Thank, Thank you very much for Thank your you. time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today um, in this hour where we learned uh, different forms of journaling as well as how to practice 
on the subconscious side to build the positive element. We're going to be back next week with Anissa, who's going to be sharing with us about being you, right? And, and how we can move in that space. And obviously the practice that Dr. D taught us today is, is, is perfect in the sense of moving in that direction. So again, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. See you next Wednesday at the same time. And Dr. D, thank you very much. Thank you. For being Bye. in my life and uh, the guide and inspiration. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless.